When we look at our contexts, we ask, what's the state of freedom of religion or belief here? The triangle of violence is a useful tool for analysing this. Often when we think about violations of freedom of religion or belief, we think about direct, physical violence. Violence with clear, specific victims and perpetrators. Direct violence can be carried out by states, by groups in society, and it can also take place within the family. There are lots of different examples of this, like security force attacks, terror attacks, mob violence, honour-based violence, torture, sexual violence, land-grabbing and hate crimes, such as vandalism, assault and hate speech. All of these cause direct physical or psychological injury to people or people's property. Usually, direct violence tends to be obvious and visible, although violence towards women is often kept invisible. So when we do a freedom of religion or belief context analysis, we ask, are there any examples of direct violence related to religion or belief in my context? Direct violence is actually only a small part of the triangle of violence. A much larger part is made up of structural violence. Structural violence is the harm done to people by injustice and discrimination in society, leading to the denial of their basic rights. This injustice and discrimination can be found in the structures of society, in laws and policies, in written and unwritten rules, in the institutions and praxis of both government authorities and civil society, and in the behaviour of individuals. Structural violence can harm people in every area of their lives, for example by denying them access to work, housing, land, justice, citizenship and so on. Structural violence is sometimes obvious, like when a law explicitly discriminates against a certain group. But usually it's partly hidden, taking the form of institutionalised prejudices, expectations and behaviours. Often it's hard to pinpoint a specific perpetrator of structural violence. It's the system. People are often affected by structural injustice for more than one reason. For example, religion or belief gender, class, and so on. This is called intersectional discrimination. So when we do a freedom of religion or belief context analysis, we ask ourselves, what examples of structural violence connected to freedom of religion or belief are there in my context? How are men and women, and boys and girls, affected by these? If we look at the triangle of violence, we can see that it's unstable. It's standing on its tip. It should fall over. This reflects the fact that violence creates instability in society. So what is it that holds the triangle up and allows direct and structural violence to keep on happening? It's held in place by cultural narratives of violence or cultural violence. Cultural narratives of violence are the attitudes, values, beliefs and norms that make structural and direct violence seem legitimate, acceptable or even inevitable in people's minds. Without the support of public acceptance, structural and physical violence cannot persist. So the roots of violence lie in the way we think, speak and feel about one another. Cultural narratives of violence can be transmitted in lots of ways. Through religion, ideology, the way language is used, art, science, the media, the school system. So when we do a freedom of religion or belief context analysis, we ask ourselves, what attitudes and values make direct and structural violence seem okay to people in my context and my community? And how are these attitudes and values being transmitted? These three kinds of violence form a mutually reinforcing and dynamic system. For example, 
when the state discriminates against a group, this legitimises discrimination and violence towards them in the wider community, which in turn is made acceptable by the way the group is represented in the media, textbooks and in the minds of other communities. Once we've identified these three types of violence and created a triangle for our context, we can look at it and think about which of these issues we can work to change.